What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing something a little bit different. We are participants in Makati or Will's sub-tournament. If you don't know Makati, go check him out in the description down below. I'll leave a link to his channel. Uh, you might want to be there tomorrow because it's actually going to be quite important. But uh, Makati is uh, somebody that I used to watch when he was part of the uh, GBA D-League. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that was basically the, uh, the NPL minors of the GBA and he was a player in that league and he was also a player in the GPC when I joined which was kind of cool it was, it was kind of surreal to me that somebody that I had watched prior in the past on YouTube was in a league with me uh, he's got a lot of a pretty big sub count actually uh, it's very good he's got great commentary he's, uh, he's a great guy he's really funny so go, go check him out when you get a chance but anyway we're part of his sub tournament basically the way this works is a single elimination process uh, bracket of 64 people uh, 64 players and uh, you play a match um, three times before a certain deadline and um, and basically if you make it through the first three games then you move on into the top eight uh, quarterfinals semifinals and finally of course the finals so where I'm gonna be showing you my games um, so you, you know I have at least more than one so first off we were against Gerbillard here as you can see, I brought the team that Jose gave me because it's the team I felt the most comfortable with. Now, I made it a point to make sure I wasn't going to bring uh, the same team ever in the first three rounds uh, so that I would at least have a little bit of diversity and it would be hard for my next opponent afterwards to scout which, which team I would bring. It could even be a completely different one, but I'm really comfortable with these teams. So, starting off here, <clears throat> I, I seem to have a pretty good matchup here. Uh, he's got two, uh, three potential electric type moves coming my way, coming off of Genesect, uh, Rotom Wash, and um, Tapu Koko. All of which I don't deal with too well because I only have Mammoth Swine to deal with them. Uh, Mammoth Swine does not deal with Genesect or with uh, Rotom Wash very well, nor does, does it lead uh, well or deal well with Tapu Koko if it has Grass Knot. And the rest of his team just destroys Mammoth Swine, so um, not looking too hot against the electric types. But I do have Banded Feramoso, which is looking like it could sweep up this game as long as um, I get the speed boost before his Genesect comes in. Uh, and also if it doesn't have E-Speed and I'm under Psychic Terrain, uh, if it does. So let's see the lead matchup. We lead off with Toxapex. He leads off with Lando. Now I predict him not to go for an Earthquake turn one. He's going to go for a U-turn, take some Rocky Helmet damage. A little bit of a bull play on my end, but I thought I'd just called maybe try to get a burn. Fish for a burn. Don't get it on the uh, Rotom. But I'm going to stay in again here as he goes for a Will-O-Wisp and misses, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to go uh, get up a Toxic Spike. The reason I'm staying in is because I know that this Volt Switch is not going to do all that much to me. So I'm just going to here throw out a Scald, uh, get off some damage on this uh, Tapu Koko. 24%, very respectable with that Poison Damage, looking kind of nice. Going to switch out into Mamoswine here as he goes for a Taunt. I, I am oblivious, so that's fine with me. I'm now going to get up my Rocks as they're going to help tremendously in this game, especially with the Landorus, the Feramosa, everything really. And now I'm going to switch back out into my Toxapex as he goes for a Hydro Pump, which is perfectly fine with me. And uh, right here, I'm just going to recover, I believe, and uh, get back a lot of my health as he brings in his uh, Magirno, which is kind of a threat. Now, this is another Pokemon that could potentially have an electric move. He's got Volt Switch. It turns out that his entire team is a Volt Turning team. As you can see, he's got Volt Switch and U-Turn on pretty much everything. Uh, as I throw out a Scald, I do get the burn on the Rotom this time around, and I'm not staying in on it. He predicts that very nicely. And goes for a Hydro Pump on my Mamoswine, knocking it out. Like I said before, Mamoswine wasn't doing too much uh, in this game. He has a lot of decent checks to it, so that was fine. I now bring in my Specs Tapu Lele. I fire off a Psychic. Nothing on his team really wants to take it outside of Magirna. He doesn't switch it in, though, so that's fine. His Rotom goes down, and now we are going to... I'm actually going to slow this down to normal. We're going to go out into Metagross on a predicted Flash Cannon. And uh, right here, I'm just going to Meteor Mash, gauge the damage on his Landorus, find out if it's Scarfed or not. I saw U-Turn already, so I have a pretty good indication that it mo more than likely is Scarfed. Right here, he's just going to Volt Switch out, leaving his Magir in a week, which is amazing. And right here, he is going to go out into his Landorus and uh, take another 12% from Rocks. Mamoswine's Rocks coming in clutch right now. And I'm going to switch out into Mandibuzz. It's my best play against this thing, as he does go for the U-Turn. That's fine with me, because the next time he comes in again, he's just taking more Rock damage. Tapu Koko does come in, and right here, this is the moment that I realize that I no longer have an electric switch in and his uh, Genesect potentially has Thunderbolt and I could just straight up lose to that so very scary right here I'm now going to switch out my Mandibuzz I believe 
into my Tapu Lele, as I can take any hit, I also get rid of his uh, his terrain. He goes for the Volt Switch, it's gonna do a decent amount, but not enough to, uh, to weaken us to the point where I'm too terrified. As he goes into his Magirna, right here, I think I'm going to just go for a Hidden Power Fire, I believe, yes. And we are gonna knock out the Magirna from this range, fantastic, that thing is gone. And now he's gonna bring out his Landorus, which I cannot knock out, and uh, I'm gonna make the play back into my Mandibuzz, as I believe here is where he Stone Edges, makes a very nice play. But since I'm relatively sure that this thing is Choice Scarfed, uh, I'm going to pull a double back out into my Metagross here. I actually expected him to potentially double as well, but um, I had to make the play, as we do take the Stone Edge very well. And I'm going to go for an Earthquake, expecting him not to want to stay in. Plus, it does the most amount of damage to his Genesect if that was his, a switch in. And I wanted to get that thing weakened, absolutely. So I go for the Earthquake, knock out the Tapu Koko, which is fantastic. Back comes in... Car uh, Calrissian, Calrissian. As he goes for a U-turn, I expect him not to earthquake on that turn, and I'm just actually going to throw out a meteor mash on this turn, I believe. As uh, I expected him to Stone Edge, actually predicting my Mandibuzz, that's why I went for that. And uh, he's gonna bring in his Genesect, and here's where I'm terrified of the Thunderbolt. Like that could actually just sweep me, but he goes for the U-turn, takes some Rocky Helmet damage. Now he's in uh, a good range where like foul play could take him out. He's gonna go back into Lando. I've been playing very risky with this Toxapex all game, so I'm actually going to switch it out here um, instead of keeping it in this time as he does go for the Earthquake. Now here, a little bit of a misplay. I probably should have foul played, but I knew that foul play wouldn't take out the Feromosa, and I didn't want that thing ga gaining needless boosts against me. So not realizing that I have a perfect check in uh, Toxapex, I actually just go for the U-turn not wanting to get locked in against the uh, the Feromosa. Had I gone for foul play here, this Genesect would have been dealt with. But now I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm in a bad position because uh, if he does have Thunderbolt, I actually just lose. Because nothing on my team takes a Thunderbolt if he's Scarfed uh, as well. I predicted dual Scarfers, but I go into Tox Specs hoping that maybe I can live it. But he does reveal the E-Speeds, showing that he does not have the... Uh, the Thunderbolt, which is fantastic. Now, of course, three of his Pokemon had electric coverage, so it was less than likely that his Genesect actually had Thunderbolt on it, but it was always a possibility. Here, again, I predict him not to go for the Earthquake, and I'm just gonna recover up. If he did EQ, then it was a free switch out into my Mandibuzz and free recovery, uh, and Feromosa can't Oko Mandibuzz, so unless it's, of course, Choice Bandit, in which case um, Tapu Lele comes in and revenges it because I'm Choice Scarfed, uh, or, you know, Toxapex comes back in, whatever. But uh, I'm just going to knock out the uh, the Landorus right there. And here I know that this Feromosa can't do anything to me. Uh, I'm going to go for the recover on the high jump kick in case he crits it. Uh, I didn't want to be in a position where he could uh, potentially sweep me if he was banded. Um, so I'm just going to recover there. And now I'm going to go for a Scald. And that's going to be the end of the game. We do take a 5-0 victory against Gerbilard. So a very convincing win right there. Of course, uh, if that Genesect had Thunderbolt, that would have been pretty much game over. So just a simple set uh, could have completely changed the tide of this game. It looks like a 5-0, but it was actually a lot closer than that. Now let's move on to the next game. Here we are against Cap James. And um, I brought the team that Johnny passed me, actually, with this uh, awesome superior set. Uh, Subseed with Leaf Storm. Uh, Specs Greninja. I kind of forget the rest of the sets, but uh, let's get into the game and put this on normal. So I decided to lead off with Mamoswine. He leads off with his Persian. Now, I was going to click Earthquake, predicting the taunt, but I'm like, you know what? Rocks are kind of important. Let me try to go for them. Uh, he actually goes to the foul play, and I think I go for the... No, I, I do go for the Earthquake, predicting the taunt. Excuse me. Uh, and now I'm going to switch out into my Superior, which takes the foul play very nicely. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. And right here... <laughs> guys, never do this. Um... Cap forgot, but, like, you, you should never do this against uh, a contrary mon. He goes for Parting Shot here. Uh, actually, he goes for Taunt first on my uh, Substitute, I believe, yeah. And then he goes for Parting Shot on my Superior, forgetting that Contrary is the thing. And he's gonna raise my Special Attack as I go for a Leaf Storm. Uh, and he switches out into his Marowak, which, at plus one Special Attack, can no longer take two of these. So, I'm gonna fire off another Leaf Storm, praying that I don't miss. And I do not, which is awesome. We're gonna knock out the Marowak, fantastic. As we get the uh, the plus five uh, on our special attack, which is great. He now goes into Tangrowth, I believe. Which, unless it was Assault Vest, probably couldn't have taken this anyway. But I go for the hit, sorry about that. I go for the Hidden Power Fire, and uh, I get a crit. And I, th I th thought maybe it mattered, but he said it didn't matter, so whatever. Uh, I'm gonna go for the Hidden Power Fire on the Magirna now. It does, a we it does live, which is kind of scary, and goes for a Shift Gear, and I'm like, oh no. And then he goes for a Z-Move Twinkle Tackle, I believe, uh, and he knocks out Superior, which was like, oh, this is not good. Um, 
So Superior definitely put in work, but uh, now I'm going to go out into Greninja. We do have the Water Shuriken on this, uh, and I'm just going to fire it off right here. He's going to go into his Persian, which is not going to take this all too well because we are Specs. And I'm actually going to get a 5 hit uh, with a crit on this, and this is, uh, sorry, a 4 hit. And that's going to put him in range of the next Water Shuriken, uh, absolutely. And now we are Ash Greninja, which automatically gets 3 hits with Water Shuriken no matter what, uh, which is great. And we're looking pretty good. We're looking decent. Uh, he goes out into Zygarde. I'm kind of scared of this, so I'm not going to give it a chance to set up in front of me. I'm just going to go hard into Tapu Lele as he decides to go for the Dragon Dance. We are Choice Scarfed on this uh, team. Turns out that he's max speed, but we do live the Thousand Arrows on 2%. We're going to go for a Moonblast and knock out the Zygarde. With the range that the Magirna is at, it would go down, so he goes into a Zapdos. Uh, I actually predict him not to go for the electric move here uh, and go into Garchomp as he does throw out a Thunderbolt, which is fantastic. We are Swords Dance, so I'm going to fire off a Swords Dance here. A little bit of a prediction game coming up here because he does Heat Wave and Burn me, so it kind of makes up for the hacks on the Tank Growth a little bit earlier uh, and for the crit plus four hits on Persian. I'm going to go for another Swords Dance as he goes for a, another Heat Wave. And here I believe I throw out a Dragon Claw. Uh, as he switches out into his Magirna, if I'm not mistaken. No, I go for Dragon Claw. He stays in. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of Life Orb damage. He's going to go for another Heat Wave. It's only going to do 15%. Thanks to the Burn nerf, we are still re relatively healthy. I'm going to go for another Dragon Claw as he switches out into his Magirna. And I know that his only play is to switch back into Zapdos. So I'm actually just going to throw out another Dragon Claw right here. Uh, as he does switch back into Zapdos, we we're able to knock that out, and that gives us yet another 5-0 with the Earthquake on the following turn on Magirna. The crit didn't matter, as you guys saw earlier, uh, we did 65% with Dragon Claw. Wow, I keep scrolling down the page. Sorry, guys. And uh, Magirna's going to come back in. We are at 3%. We are going to knock this thing out with an Earthquake. Unfortunately, we go down to Life Orb, so it's actually a 4-0. I said 5-0, but it is a 4-0. Uh, in our favor. So that's uh, two games down. We now only have one more game to win before we make it into the quarterfinals. So uh, looking at this, I was kind of low on teams and I was like, oh, what do I use? And I remembered that I had uh, used Blunder's team, uh, the one with Tapu Bulu on it, in a live recently. And it didn't do too well, <clears throat> but I felt like I scouted my opponent and what he was using. And I felt like it could probably have a pretty good matchup in this game. So I decided to bring this team right here. So we got Tapu Fini, we've got another Specs Greninja, with this time with U-Turn. Actually, I think it's the same as Johnny said, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we've got Scarf Lando, which is actually a huge threat right now in OU, believe it or not. Uh, it's still amazing in Gen 7. Um, Tapu Bulu over here with, um, it's actually not a Choice Bandit set, it's Sword Stance, uh, All Out Pummeling with Super Power, of course. Um, Horn Leech and Zen Headbutt, so it's able to deal with like a Moongus, Venus, Mega Venusaur, and stuff like that because of Sword Dance plus uh, Zen Headbutt. And uh, we've got uh, Specially Defensive Heat Ran and Mega Metagross, so a lot of the same ones you guys have seen before. We are using a Lando this time, uh, Tapu Bulu, Tapu Fini, so let's get into the game. Let's see what happened. I'm gonna put it on normal. He leads off with his Reuniclus. Now, after having scouted his last game, uh, I was pretty sure this Reuniclus was Life Orb and he hadn't changed it at all because his team was exactly the same uh, as his replay from the last game. So I'm actually just going to go for a U-turn, get off a massive amount of damage here, and I'm going to go into Metagross, knowing that uh, I can take a Psy Shock, which is more than likely what he's going for, as he does go for Psy Shock. And now I'm going to predict the switch out into Tangrowth and double out into Heatran right here, as he does go out into Tangrowth. I also know that this thing is physically defensive and not specially defensive, so I'm a huge threat to his Tangrowth right now. I go for Rocks, and he actually doubles back into Reuniclus on a potential uh, Lava Plume, which wasn't a bad play, but as you can see here with a crit and the fact that I burned him, uh, this Reuniclus is really low now. He goes for Focus Blast, does a decent amount of damage. We are especially defensive though, so it's not too, too bad. That's Life Orb, by the way, guys, uh, as you'll see from the damage on Metagross right here. He is Life Orb Regenerator. Uh, as he does go for the Shadow Ball, it does 73% to Metagross. And right here, I am at 17%, so I know I can take a Rocky Helmet hit. I'm going to throw out an Ice Punch, and his Tangrowth comes in. Now, of course, it risks the Freeze, but it also risks a lot of damage on it, as we do get off a nice 36%. I want this uh, Tangrowth low, though, so I can spam EQ later in the game. As he's going to switch back into his Reuniclus, actually, as I go for another Ice Punch, get off a huge hit on this. And I didn't expect him to stay in here, guys. I expected him to double back into Tangrowth, seeing as he was Regenerator. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I pulled a, a switch out into my Heat Ran right here. Uh, letting it take a little bit of unnecessary damage, but I'd rather keep Metagross as a sack at the very least. And there's no way he's going for anything but Shadow Ball on this turn if he does stay in. So I decide to switch this uh, this in. And I do get two rounds of leftovers as well, so it's not a huge hit ultimately. Next turn he brings in his Sharpedo. Huge threat to my Heat Ran. I, I switch out into Top of Affinity on the Waterfall. 
we're able to take that very well. I expect to switch out into, like, um, Excadrill on a uh, fairy move or something of the sort. Uh, so I actually threw out a, a Nature's Madness right here. I wouldn't have taken as much damage as I did uh, had I just gone for the Moonblast because this Sharpedo would have been dead. He goes for the Psychic Fangs. We do, thankfully, land the Nature's Madness. And on the following turn, I'm not playing any games. I'm just going to go for the Moonblast, knock this thing out. It, is, it does get off another hit, leaving us pretty low at 42% after Leftovers Recovery. So I'm not looking too hot, especially against that Tapu Koko, which is yet, yet again a huge threat to me. Rocks are up, thankfully, so this is going to help enormously. Uh, here I decide to stay in, actually predicting him not to go for an electric move because I haven't brought in Lando once since the beginning of the game. Uh, works out perfectly because uh, we do get off a, uh, a Moonblast on his Tapu Koko, weakening it severely and putting it in range of Water Shuriken now. So, Dazzling Gleam is going to take us out. After the Life Orb hit, Stealth Rocks, there's no way he lives Water Shuriken, even one hit will kill him. I bring in Lando. And I do go for the U-turn here because I know that I still have my Metagross to sack in case he stays in, but I wanted to cover the switch into Tangrowth just in case and bring in my, uh, my uh, Heat Ran again, which he no longer had a switch to. And either way, this Tapu Koko was going down this turn, so this was fine. Sack off the, uh, the Metagross and now go back into Lando because it covers everything pretty well. He does go into his Tangrowth. I didn't really expect that because I had the Heat Ran as an option, but I am going to U-turn here into Heat Ran. Uh, I'm kind of fearing the... Um, the Earthquake on this turn, because Heat Run was kind of obvious, but he does go for the knockoff. Uh, he never answered me to whether or not he had Earthquake, but uh, I'm going to throw out a Plume here and get rid of the Tangrowth, and this is huge because now I can just spam Earthquake. If he brings in Mimikyu, I know what my play is. It's just a quick Lava Plume. I need to break the Disguise. I have priority on my team. Uh, I have the Scarfed Earthquake, so I'm fine. I have Intimidate. Uh, but I actually do end up getting a burn on this Mimikyu, which is a little bit annoying for my opponent, of course. As uh, now, its Shadow Claw is obviously going to be able to knock out Heat Ran because Heat Ran's not that physically defensive. He actually gets a crit. I don't know if that mattered or not. Probably not. Uh, but now I can bring in Tapu Bulu, which will be able to live any hit from this thing. And uh, I'll just go for the Horn Leech right here. It'll get me back pretty much any, all, any and all of my health. He goes for Shadow Claw, actually, which does nothing because of the burn. And we are going to get him back our health. And now this uh, Excadrill is forced to lock itself into Iron Head against me because Earthquake is in grassy terrain and it's resisted. Uh, he's going to get off a huge chunk, but we do live. And we're going to go for the Horn Leech here, leaving him at 11%. We are going to go down to the next Iron Head, of course. But the fact that he's locked into Iron Head, because I know he's Scarf, by the way, guys. Uh, and he goes for Iron Head and... Um, because he's locked in, I can now bring in my Greninja, just fire off a Water Shuriken, and I thought it would take two hits, but actually just one is enough to knock out this Excadrill easily, and uh, that's going to be it. So we do make it into the knockout stage. Um, this video should be coming out uh, in a couple of hours from me recording it, so on Saturday uh, evening, and if you guys are watching this, make sure to check out Makati's channel, like I said before, in the description down below. He's going to be streaming the top eight, which we will, of course, be a part of. If you guys want to catch that, it'll be at 11 p.m., sorry, 11 a.m., excuse me, 11 a.m. Eastern, um, which is 4 p.m. Grand Meridian time and uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time. So for any of you that are, are in different locations or around the country, you know more or less uh, what time this stream is going to be happening. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, if you did enjoy this kind of video, uh, if you want me to participate in more tournaments like this, I will. So let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought about it. Uh, I know it's just replays, but I can bring live comms as well. Uh, also for the GPC, which is coming up, I'm going to be live comming every single one of my games. Not everybody will like that, but uh, I, I prefer live comming. Uh, I feel it gives you more of, um, of you know, it's it puts you more in a position... Um, one where you have to uh, make better plays because you're on the spot and you can't really bail yourself out by saying, oh, well, I thought this would happen in post comms. Uh, and it also uh, gives your viewers, uh, so you guys, a better feel of how I'm feeling during the game, what my thought press processes are, just like when we're doing lives together. So that's going to be that. Uh, now again, if you want me to do live comms with series like this, with tournaments like this, definitely let me know. Always let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like, guys. Uh, it's always appreciated. It's, uh, it doesn't get me... In case any of you guys are wondering, likes don't gain you exposure. They don't gain you, um, revenue or anything like that. They're purely for analytics and, uh, to make you feel good <laughs> about having posted a video so that's pretty much it if you guys did enjoy make sure to hit that like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't already if you enjoy the content and i will catch you guys later ciao